Okay, Carol, would you like to make an introduction here? All right, I am so pleased to have Caroline Griffith, um, the executive director of the Northwest Environmental Center speaking to us today. And as you guys all know, NEC has been around a long time and served such an important service to us all. And um, Caroline's been in the area, I think, since 2017. Yeah, I did read a little bit about that, but we didn't connect as much as I would like about her bio. So I'm going to let Caroline share a little about herself and what's going on at NEC. So please welcome. Thank you. Um, I guess first I want to thank you all for getting me up so early in the morning. Uh, it's not my normal state and it really was lovely to have an excuse to sit in my backyard and watch the sun come up and listen to some birds. That's like a good way to start any day, but especially Earth Day and kind of set the tone for things. Um, and I, I don't know a whole lot about Rotary, so this has been a really fun experience being here, but I was telling a friend that I was coming and he told me about how when he was in high school, he got to be an exchange student in Japan because of Rotarians and how that set him off on a journey um, to do a lot of really amazing things in life. And so it's been cool to see all the various things that you all are involved in. So thank you for doing that. Um, I, as Carol said, I'm the executive director of the North Coast Environmental Center, which I'm sure that a lot of people have various relationships with since we've been around for a very long time. Um, I am relatively new to the area, uh, grew up in Nebraska, got here by way of Oregon, um, and have always, um, at the heart of what I'm doing, been working on environmental issues uh, and really the, the overlapping things, right? That it, this is more than just the environment. We are the environment, uh, but there's so many different issues that affect us and it, and realizing all those intersections. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about a little bit about the NEC, uh, what we're up to these days. Um, and different ways that folks can get involved. So um, probably a lot of you are familiar with NEC, but our, our mission is to promote under, understanding of the relations between people in the biosphere and to conserve, protect, and celebrate terrestrial, aquatic, and marine ecosystems of Northern California and Southern Oregon, which is an incredibly broad mission statement. So that gives us a lot of latitude to do a lot of different things, which is great. Uh, and we were founded in uh, 1971, shortly after the first Earth Day. So this is kind of our um, conceptual anniversary in a way. Uh, and we're the oldest organization, aside from tribal entities who are, are working on environmental issues behind the Redwood Curtain. And um, since our beginning, we've really worked to collaborate with other groups um, uh, on uh, environmental issues. So we have a lot of member organizations. Currently, I believe we have 10. Uh, we work a lot with um, groups like Humboldt Baykeeper, Environmental Protection Information C Center, um, the North Group, the Sierra Club, Zero Waste Humboldt, so I have a whole list here, Coalition for Responsible Transportation Priorities, Redwood Region Audubon Society, the California Native Plant Society, um, we do have a few far-flung member groups too, out in Trinity County, we have safe alternatives for our forest environment. Uh, we have friends of Del Norte up in Del Norte County um, and California's for alternatives to toxics as well. So work on a variety of different issues uh, because as you know, none the environment isn't just one thing, right? There are so many different things that have affected it. Uh, and throughout the half century that we've worked, we've done a lot of things like working to expand um, Redwood National Park and almost doubling the size of it. Uh, we have worked with allied with local tribes to work to stop the Go Road, which would have connected Gaske and Orleans and uh, desecrated sacred indigenous lands. And that was in the eighties, I believe. Um, we helped launch the oldest rural recycling program in the United States with the Arcata, um, Arcata Community Recycling Center, uh, which is very exciting. Um, and we also helped pioneer Coastal Cleanup Day, which now is one of the largest um, volunteer events in the world. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, so we've done a lot of stuff. Uh, and actually on our website, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about some of those campaigns and the history, we have an Ollie presentation that myself and our former executive director, Larry Bass, put together. Um, and our website is yournec.org. You can just fool around on there and find a lot of those things. Um, but as we have, you know, kind of transitioning into the next 50 years, and unfortunately we had to sell, we had to cancel our 50th anniversary celebration last year because of COVID. Uh, so hopefully we will do something this year uh, to celebrate 50 plus years. 
but really thinking about like what the next 50 years will be like of working to you know preserve and protect the environment here. Uh, and so we do continue to work on a lot of the same issues. We actually, um, a lot of people, and Ian mentioned this was Eco News, that's how a lot of people know us. Uh, and we have an archive of all of the Eco News from the early 70s to the present which is really fascinating if anybody's interested in looking. And um, I've gone through it before and really been amazed at how many issues we were working on back then that we're still working on now. Uh, and some of them have disappeared and popped back up again. And so it just really highlights the, um, the fact that this advocacy, this continued advocacy is really, really important. Um, so we work to continue to influence forest policy. Um, is, are you putting our website up, Maggie? Yes, <laughs> it's like you read my mind. Um, so we continue to try to influence forest policy, um, particularly with uh, the revamp of the Northwest Forest Plan is happening and to influence um, some of the timber sales that happen after fires, like a lot of post-fire logging to make sure that that's done in a, a safe manner. Um, we also track a lot of development projects like the proposed fish farm um, and also housing is a really big thing that's happening now. So like watching some of the housing policy and how that's working to make sure that um, we can provide the housing that we desperately need while also addressing the climate crisis and make sure that we do it in a way that is sustainable and that um, that maintains the character of our communities. Like the thing that's so great about Arcata is that you can walk to the forest and that you're so close to the beach and you have all these ag lands and to make sure that we don't build out into those as we work to accommodate the people who are moving to the area. Um, we also are really keeping an eye on offshore wind. We're very excited that we could be at the forefront of this industry and wanna make sure that we're doing that again in a way that has the, the utmost environmental standards so that we can provide uh, carbon-free uh, energy for ourselves and also protect the fish and the whales and the industry that also relies on that area. So we're watching that really heavily. Um, and also transportation is one like working to um, promote shifts in transportation so that we can get everybody where they need to go in a more carbon neutral way. Um, so we still do coastal cleanup day, uh, which is a really big way for people to get involved. Um, and we do a lot of debris cleanup, uh, but we expanded coastal cleanup day to coastal cleanup month with COVID um, because we felt that was safer, but also just to like foster that idea that we don't just do these things one day of the year, you know, uh, we really want to um, foster that idea that like every day is a day, there are things that we can be doing every day. Uh, and we focus a lot in our cleanups on uh, data collection now, um, with the idea that we don't just want to pick up the trash once it's reached the beach, but to stop it at the source. Uh, so we do use a marine debris app where we track everything so we can see what the main sources of debris are, um, whether that's cigarette butts, single use plastic, fishing gear, things like that, so that we can work to advocate for solutions before, you know, kind of to turn off the tap rather than just bailing out the bathtub as it's overflowing. And we were actually really excited uh, to see a couple of years ago that the city of Arcata used the data that we collected in our cleanups to help um, inform and justify its single use plastic span. So it shows that it's working. Yeah, uh, so we really do love uh, to help people in their cleanups, um, which is a really fun. I was actually out, staff and I were out doing a cleanup yesterday up I Street, um, and just to be out in the community is really great. Um, but we have lots of supplies for people. If you are ever interested, uh, we love to support folks in their cleanups. We have trash pickers, we have gloves, we have buckets. Um, we can help support in any way. Um, we do, um, so we have Coastal Cleanup Month in September, but we also have other like Adopt a Beach and Adopt a Block programs where people go back to the same spot over and over again um, and keep those places clean. Um, and also Trash Trackers, which is one that anybody can do anytime. There's just an app and you put in what you're finding and we love that. Um, and so another way, oh, and actually Maggie reminded me um, when, earlier that uh, we also have um, to lend out to people for events um, uh, zero waste like dining kits. So we have napkins and things like that. And you can come in and buy zero waste kits as well. So you don't have to, it's like a silverware and napkins, uh, cloth napkins, so you don't have to use disposable things. So just trying to get that in in every way. Um, and so another way that you probably know the uh, eco news, uh, us is through eco news, as Ian was saying, and that's really a delightful little anecdote that growing up. Uh, and I love, I'm very, very proud of eco news. That's something that um, I came onto the NEC to do, and I took that over a couple of years ago. Um, and we, 
really work to bring high quality environmental um, news and education to people. Uh, but we also realize that the environment doesn't exist in a vacuum, you know, and the same things that affect our work also affect, you know, they perpetuate racial inequality, gender inequality, wealth inequality. Um, so, you know, kind of as you were talking about the, 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 what we hear and the representation that we see really informs how we do our work, right? So we are working to bring news through that intersectional lens and really focusing on environmental justice. Um, so we are also to do that, we're expanding the demographics of our contributors and really working to pair with different social justice groups and racial justice groups to show where all of our missions overlap and so we can work together. Um, and as, let's see. So the environmental movement as a whole and also the NEC has really been predominantly white and predominantly male throughout its history. Um, so as we transition into our next 50 years, we're working really hard to open that up and to make sure that our movement actually reflects the communities that we're working in. And one way that we're working to do that um, is to provide Spanish translation for our Eco News articles so that we can get them out to a different audience. Um, not only does that get the news to a different audience, but I think it also helps those of us who are not Spanish speaking to realize that we do have Spanish speaking neighbors. You know, when you see those side by side, you have to really think about, you know, how we, how we can exist better together and, you know, work better together. Uh, we are also working really hard um, to attract more indigenous uh, students and students of color to our internships by recognizing that this is, the NEC has been a jumping off point for a lot of people into like larger environmental careers. We've had people go on to, you know, state offices, to city offices, to work in really high level policy. And a lot of times it, you know, you have to have that opportunity to learn before you can jump off. So making sure that we are expanding those opportunities and we are doing that through paying for our internships. So that is one big thing that we're working to focus on now is fundraising so we can sustainably pay our interns so that we're honoring the labor that they're giving us uh, and also getting that opportunity to them. Plus we get to learn from younger students too. I think that that's a huge value, just that um, intergenerational learning. And so something that we're also kind of flirting with and it's not a fully formed uh, program yet but is an environmental mentorship program as well, because we have so many people who are involved with the NEC on the board or just past supporters who have an immense amount of knowledge um, to work to get some of that knowledge of processes, especially because a lot of these civic processes are very complex. Um, I don't know if any of you all have ever read uh, an environmental impact report. There are thousands of pages, they're very intense. Uh, and even just the process of how one engages with that is very hard. And so just teaching, you know, getting that knowledge to younger folks, but also fostering that, um, the exchange of ideas between generations, because there is an awful lot that the younger generations as well have to teach the older generations. Uh, which seems like that, it, it's been, I really enjoyed watching all the, you know, things that you all are working on, because I feel like there's a huge amount of overlap. You know, we're very much on that same page that, opportunity, um, we're all given opportunity, right? Like that is a thing, like we are div different opportunities. And so to kind of level that playing field and give those opportunities to different people, I think is hugely important. And especially looking at the um, environmental movement, I think it's it, vital to our survival as well. You know, we, we really need to be um, reflective of the community as a whole and the community's needs as a whole. So to do that, we need to make sure we are, you know, engaging the community as a whole. Um, uh, um, and I think going back to the, the paid, the internships thing, um, we think that that's, we, a lot of the people who have been involved with the NEC for a long time um, have brought up the fact that when they first got involved in doing this work, the economic situation um, in our country was very different. And many of them went to California universities for very, very cheap. Uh, they did not come out of school with huge amounts of debt. Uh, housing's also a lot cheaper here. So like it was much easier for them to give their time for free. Uh, and so I really value that we've been able to kind of shift that and realize that nobody should be giving their time for free. And then you got three minutes, okay, cool. <laughs> um, and so, um, another thing we are, we're working a lot on, um, so with the mentorship program, going back to that, um, I would say that 
um, if anyone here has ideas um, or has experience with any sort of mentorship program like that, I would love to talk to you about like how to implement that and get it going. Um, that is a way I could definitely, um, you could get involved with the environmental movement by helping us to, to foster that. Um, we are also, um, one thing that we do have going coming up really soon um, is Birdathon, um, which is a fundraiser that we do in collaboration with the Redwood Region Audubon Society. Uh, and it's like a walkathon, uh, but it's for watching birds. So you go out for a set period of time uh, and identify bird species. And you've like asked your friends or family to make a pledge of like five cents or 10 cents per bird species. Uh, so it's really an excuse for you to go outside and look at birds um, and enjoy what we have to offer here. This is a beautiful time of year as the birds come through. Um, and then to fundraise for a couple of groups who really have done a lot of work to um, you know, to preserve the the environment that those birds live in, that we all share together. Um, and I guess I will close. It's about time. Um, so we really embrace the idea that every day is Earth Day, and um, there are tons of different ways to get involved. There's so many different avenues to get involved in the movement. Um, but I was looking up the uh, this year's theme for Earth Day internationally, uh, which is invest in the planet. Uh, which means a lot of different things, but it made me think about how the root word of the, the economy, uh, the root word of ecology, uh, ecosystem, eco comes from the Greek word oikos, oikos, I'm not Greek, so I can't pronounce it right, but um, it means home. So literally economy means the maintenance of home. Uh, ecology is the study of home, ecosystem is the whole system that creates our home. Uh, and, and I found that to be really inspiring to think about that and how, you know, there's often this false conflict between, you know, uh, jobs and the environment that people bring up a lot. And really what we're all looking to do is just to maintain our home, to do it in a way that we can all thrive into the future. Um, so I would like to, you know, just challenge you on Earth Day to really be thinking about what you can personally be doing to maintain our home and make sure that we all get our needs met uh, not just the humans, but all the animals and the plants and everybody else that makes up our home. So, thank you. Oh, yeah, for sure. People have questions. I love questions. <laughs> yes, I love that the bird fun adds to our April 30th. <laughs> no, it's not just a traffic. Yeah. Right, it starts on April 30th. Yeah. And you could you could end your day by devoting 24 hours to looking at birds. <laughs> yeah. What was the you said the trash one? It's um so on our website you can find it under trash trackers. We use the it's the NOAA Marine Debris Tracker. So it adds to uh, international collection of data about what waste is being generated. So we should do that for how Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if you do on that app, you can pull down. Um, we have a North Coast Environmental Center because it'll kind of ask you like who you're with, and you can use the North Coast Environmental Center one uh, because we've made a. Um, we can kind of tailor the list to add things that are frequently seen around here, so that can be helpful. And then we can help pull that up and access it too if we're looking to show data about things. Were there any questions on the chat? Okay. Cool. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. In recognition of your presenting here today, we'll make a donation in your name to the Wheelchair Foundation to provide wheelchair access to people that cannot otherwise support it. Yes. Thank you for cool. speaking here. Today. Yeah. yeah. Do you, I have a question. Do you yes. ever, do those wheelchairs, are there ever like feature accessible wheelchairs? I'm not sure, yeah. but they, they are generally distributed through the Wheelchair Foundation okay. throughout the world. So cool. it may not be for our beaches. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just have it for all different types of access. Cool. Thank you, Marty. Yeah.